Hi students, today we are going to discuss about the most amazing system in the human body which is known as circulatory system. Circulatory system comprises of three main parts which are known as the blood vessels, blood flowing through these vessels and the heart. Blood Blood contains cells like red blood cells which transport gases all throughout your body. Blood platelets that prevent excessive bleeding by forming clots. White blood cells that provide us with immunity and protect us by, from infections. All these three types of blood cells float in this yellow colored fluid known as plasma. Plasma also transports nutrients. The blood is pumped throughout your body with the help of an important organ known as heart. Heart contains an outer layer called pericardium which protects the heart muscle. Heart muscle is supplied with the coronary vessels which are further divided into coronary arteries and coronary veins. These coronary vessels provide the heart muscle with oxygenated blood and collect the deoxygenated blood from the heart muscle. Ultimately, heart is also an organ which requires energy to work. Removing the coronary vessels, we are exposed to the chambers of the heart. But instead, in order to read a detail about the heart, we need to study about the internal structure. The internal view reveals four different chambers of the heart. The low thicker walled chambers are called ventricles and the upper ones are called as auricles or atria. Talking about the ventricles, both the ventricles are separated by a septum known as interventricular septum. This prevents mixing of blood from either sides of the heart. The auricles and ventricles are separated by door-like structures which are known as valves. Tricuspid valve is present between right auricle and right ventricle. Bicuspid valve is seen between left auricle and left ventricle. Valves are attached to the muscle of heart with the help of cordae tendinae which are the fibers and these are attached to the muscle called as papillary muscles inside the heart. Talking about the semilunar valves, number one in the semilunar valve is aortic valve. Iota is a curved artery that arises from the heart. It contains aortic valve. There is also a Y-shaped artery known as pulmonary artery which contains pulmonary valve. Now removing all these four types of valves, we are exposed to the openings seen inside the heart. Now removing all the chambers, we are exposed to the main conduction system of the heart. So many of you have a doubt about conduction of the heart, how heart exactly contracts and relaxes. This is because of the conduction system present in heart. The green colored node that you see above here is known as sinoatrial node or also known as pacemaker of the heart. The pacemaker of the heart generates electrical impulses till the atrioventricular node which is present between auricle and ventricle. From there it is supplied to the myocardium which is the muscle of the heart. Once receiving, once receiving the electrical impulses, the myocardium generally contracts or relaxes according to the impulse. So myocardium is responsible for the contraction and relaxation of the heart and ultimately helps in pumping the blood to different organs of your body. Now studying about the anatomy of the heart. Observing here, we can see the left anterior descending artery, also known as LAD. Down this line, you can see the intraventricular septum. This is left ventricle and right ventricle. Above, you can see thin, chambered thin chamber of the heart, known as left auricle. This is the Y-shaped pulmonary artery and this is the iota. This is the right auricle. Anatomy Talking about the iota, iota is generally having many branches. Talking about the branches of this iota, we have the common carotid artery or the CCA which supplies blood to our head and neck. 
and here we can also see the coronary arteries that discharge blood into the into the heart muscle from this direction you can also see the thickness present in the aorta the wall of aorta is literally thicker when compared to the pulmonary artery this and you can also see that aorta is going deep inside beyond the auricles by this we can see aorta opens into ventricle aortic root here you can clearly see that the aortic valve is closed there is a name for each of these cusps they are known as left common cusp right common cusp non coronary cusps lcc rcc and ncc and these two are the right and left coronary arteries that supply blood to the heart muscle you can slightly see that the cusps are opening all the three cusps are together make the aortic valve now you can clearly observe the aortic valve slightly opening and yes here it is opening completely right again once again uh, we just ha will have a look over the external view these are the auricles here and we'll see how the openings are present in these auricles so here is the right auricle and this opening is generally because a bit is extremely cut off and actually at this part there is the opening of superior vena cava but the opening will not be this much wide so if you insert a finger in the right auricle you'll end up in the right ventricle coming to the left auricle we see that the left auricle will have the connections with the pulmonary veins so the pulmonary veins open into the left auricle at this point so if you insert your finger and go deep into the pulmonary into the left auricle you end up in the left ventricle now you can clearly see the wall of pulmonary artery and you can feel that it is little bit thinner coming to the circulation of your blood keeping your hand on your chest you can just feel the lap dub sounds of the heart it indicates that your heart is pumping the blood in order to pump the blood efficiently your heart requires blood vessels the blood vessels all over your body are classified into three different types the blue colored vessels that you observe here are the veins and the red color blood vessels that you observe here are the arteries and the smaller branches of the vessels are known as capillaries capillaries of veins are known as venules and capillaries of arteries are known as arterioles venules and arterioles are the thinnest blood vessels of your body the function of the arteries is to carry oxygen rich blood from the heart to your entire body that is why we represented it in red color the function of the veins is to carry deoxygenated blood from all your body parts to the heart capillaries help in diffusion of these gases so all the time if you observe the oxygenated blood will be directed towards the heart and oxygenated blood will be directed away from the heart so once again we'll come back with the chambers names i think all of you are aware of it right now so this is the right atrium and this is the left atrium also known as right auricle or left auricle this is right ventricle and this is left ventricle now we'll talk about the valve separating these chambers the cha the valve that separates the right auricle from the right ventricle is tricuspid valve 
and valve that separates left auricle and left ventricle is mitral valve or bicuspid valve. Iota contains aortic valve, pulmonary artery contains pulmonic valve. Iotic valve and pulmonic valve are also known as semilunar valves. Circulation of the blood If you observe the circulation, it is a constant and repeating process. You can also take a screenshot like this and you can observe whether the valves are opening and closing. So discussing in step by step, first step, pulmonary veins from the lungs bring oxygen rich blood to the left auricle. By the opening of mitral valve, blood enters from left atrium to left ventricle. Now, from the left ventricle, blood enters the major artery, iota. Iota is the largest artery of your body. In order to the blood entering the iota, the aortic valves need to be opened. Once blood entered the iota, it is supplied all over your body. Now in the cells, what will happen? This oxygen is useful for burning the glucose. After burning of glucose, CO2 that is carbon dioxide is released in the cells which are collected by the veins. And now the carbon dioxide rich blood from the veins is collected from all the parts of your body and is drained into the heart by the help of vena cava. From the upper parts it is drained by superior vena cava, from the lower parts it is drained by inferior vena cava. Both superior and inferior vena cava open into the right atrium. Now, from the right atrium, blood flows into the right ventricle by the opening of tricuspid valve. See, blood entered the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, what happens here? Yes, from the right ventricle, blood enters the pulmonary artery by the opening of pulmonic valves. Now from the pulmonary artery, bread close to the lungs. In lungs, we generally, uh, the oxygen we inhaled is exchanged with the CO2 from the heart.